Malaysia Prime Minister Muhyiddin Yassin resigns and tenders his cabinet resignation letter to Malaysian King Yang Pertuan Agong Sultan Abdullah Ahmad Shah earlier today. Muhyiddin, who was earlier chaired a cabinet meeting in Putrajaya, was seen entering the National Palace at around 12.20 p.m. to meet the king for the special audience. He left to his private residence in Bukit Damansara about 40 minutes after the meeting. Questions arise on who will be the next prime minister to lead the country that is now battling with critical health care system as well as economic problems caused by the COVID-19 pandemic. Several names surfaced, including Deputy Prime Minister Dato Sri Ismail Sabri Yaakob, who is proposed to become the new leader of the country's leading political party, AMNO, and its led coalition. AMNO previously withdrew its support from Muhyiddin, blaming him incapable in handling the COVID pandemic. As for opposition Pakatan Harapan with 88 seats, Dato Sri Anwar Ibrahim is reportedly struggling to get the support from the MPs and has yet to show it commands the majority in the parliament. Amno has officially said it will not pick Anwar to replace Muhyiddin. Maka pada hari ini saya meletakkan jawatan sebagai Perdana Menteri dan jawatan seluruh ahli jemaah menteri sebagaimana yang dikendaki oleh Perlembagaan Persekutuan. Perkara 43.4 Perlembagaan Persekutuan menyebut dan ini saya petik jika Perdana Menteri tidak lagi mendapat kepercayaan majoriti ahli Dewan Rakyat maka Perdana Menteri hendaklah meletakkan jawatan Jemaah Menteri. Malaysian Prime Minister Muhyiddin Yassin held a series of meetings with his party yesterday and meet the king today. Muhyiddin resigns after a tumultuous 80 months in power. And we have Nadia Moksin reporting from Kuala Lumpur. Hello, Nadia. Please tell us um, what's the public, <laughs> what is the public's reaction uh, towards the uh, current uh, situation in Malaysia? Well, um, I would say that the public already expected this, you know. There has been a lot of speculation about it over the last few days. And people have been talking about, you know, Muhyiddin no longer enjoying majority support from a member of parliament. So the resignation did not come as a big surprise or something shocking, not at all. And plus there have been a tremendous pressure for him to step down for the past few weeks, as you can see, all the protests and, and, and the pressure also come um, from the MPs, the opposition MP and other MP, be it from the opposition or within his own party alliance. So it, this is pretty much expected. Okay, well, it is actually expected. Uh, people are already talking about it, but um, how is it like broadcast? I should say like, um, is it like people are focusing on who will be the next prime minister or focusing on the news that he didn't do a good job? 
Um, obviously, people are now focusing on who will be the next prime minister. As uh, Meridian, um, the palace has issued a statement uh, to inform that um, the king has appointed Meridian uh, and he will now serve as the caretaker prime minister until a successor is appointed. So at this point of time, the public really want to know who will lead the country, you know, especially in this um, situation where COVID-19 is not a, not a joke and is a serious matters and pressing matters now. So, and in his statement earlier, the king also dismissed the proposal of conducting a fresh election, saying that he was not in favour to do so, considering the current situation of COVID-19 uh, in the country. So, I guess people is keen to know so when we know who is the prime minister only then we can you know have a brief pictures on how the country will look like in the upcoming days or years maybe well, take us back to uh, the last time we spoke uh, sometime last week it, uh, there was mounting pressure for the prime minister to resign but he still had uh, the palace's support full support for him uh, for the time being so what changed between mm -hmm. then and now um, when Amno pulled the support from the Prime Minister and more pressure was on him after he live telecast uh, on, on the national television, he is offering the opposition ally to, to, you know, to build a, a bipartisan uh, alliance with the opposition, but not long after that, they rejected it. So I guess that is pretty much a clear sign that he already lost the support. And then um, news were reported all over that um, more AMNO um, MPs um, was, you know, pulled back the support uh, from Prakata National and from to support the Muhyiddin. Then that is where all this come from and he, and, and, and why the meeting today was held in the palace. All right, as you mentioned, uh, this comes uh, amid rising public uh, anger, uh, disappointment at the surge of the COVID cases. Do you think with, with the latest development, uh, the handling would be uh, different or it is just a good timing for the opposition uh, for a change to tackle the prime minister down? Well, I would say like different handling of COVID-19 will depend again on who comes in as the prime minister and the new government and under the Malaysian constitution when a prime minister who has lost majority support in the uh, August house must resign and his cabinet resigns with him. So that's what happened today. And and as for, and we we can only, you know, have a brief picture on on how the, the government will handle the COVID-19, the new government will handle the COVID-19 situation on, on who uh, will actually be appointed and, and the rest of his new cabinet. And, and as for, you know, a good, whether it's a good opportunity and a perfect timing for the opposition, you know, um, to, to, to use this as um, to topple him, I would say in politics is, is definitely something that the opponent would enjoy, you know, the flaws in administration, failure in leadership, you know, any opponent would enjoy the moment and use it as a weapon. But, but yeah, let's just hope that whoever that were chosen by the king, you know, really have command the majority support from the MP and will have a strong will to lead the country in, in to fight um, COVID-19 and the aftermath, especially, you know, the economy recovery and put aside you know, whatever their political motive and their political differences and put aside it and work towards to, to win this battle like we are in a serious and critical situation of COVID-19 cases is 20,000 cases daily. So a, a solid government with a clear plan must be in place ASAP. Nadia, please tell us about the potential candidates for prime minister. T tell us the dynamics. Well, um, as I said, the palace has announced Meridian is now a caretaker. So now the various political parties will have to submit names of their candidates um you know who they say have majority support to the king and 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 have the most numbers of you know members of parliament support them as the new prime minister of malaysia and obviously pakatan harapan um 
is now lobbying for support to form a new government to avoid prolonged uncertainties. So when I said Pakatan Harapan, obviously Anwar Ibrahim is in the pictures. Well, it is understand that approaches have already been made to other parties and this includes AMNO, Bersatu and, and uh, Gabungan Parti Sarawak. However, it is unclear. The question is whether they are ready uh, to support Anwar as the Prime Minister as we all know that uh, AMNO rejected the ideas of Anwar being the Prime Minister and, and, and the uh, Pakatan Harapan also is, you know, currently has not yet secured enough support among the MP to form a government with only 88 MPs uh, support him. So it, between the three uh, component parties, PKRDAP and, and Amana, and Anwar, Anwar at this point must have, you know, if, if we say if he can get support from other opposition parties, um, including Pejuang, uh, led by former Prime Minister or An Anwar Longtime love-hate relationship, Tun Mahathir Mohamad, um, he will only will have 105 um, MPs behind him. All he needs is 111 out of 222 MPs uh, to form a government. And on the other hand, we have AMNO and, and Bersatu. You know, speculation is growing. Some analysts even uh, believe that AMNO potentially can, you know, can make a comeback, you know, can regain control. And of course, with uh, one condition that um, AMNO man to be named as uh, prime minister and um, Bersatu will take the second post. And when I said AMNO man, uh, of course, a uh, few name, uh, few name surfaces such as uh, Deputy Prime Minister Datuk Sri uh, Abdullah uh, uh, Ismail Sabri Yaakob, and also Amno veteran uh, Tengku Razali Hamza. So many names uh, surface, and we have yet to have a clear picture on who will get the strongest command in the House of Parliament. The updates. Okay, thank you very much, Nadia Mohsen, reporting from Kuala Lumpur. Stay safe, Nadia. Nadia Mohsen reporting from KL. Now stay with us for more right here on Asia Prime. You're watching Metro Globe Network.